Hello and welcome to The City Show. I'm your host, Dr. Tom Krieger. On this week's show, we'll preview the Lebanon Independence Day Parade and Celebration. We'll also hear about theater camp and the return of live theater in Lebanon. And we'll tell you about Cedar Oaks Wellness Center, a new ray of hope for people dealing with addictions in our community. But up first, Adam Matthews is back, uh, keeping a tradition with the uh, parade going. Uh, and, and, and that is, that is important. Uh, tradition, isn't it, Adam? Yes, thank you so much, yeah. Doctor. It's uh, great to have it again. I believe we're the, we continued it last year, yeah. uh, which makes us technically the longest running Independence Day parade uh, in the county. And to have an opportunity for so much of our community to come together to celebrate the Declaration of Independence and the rights it enshrines is a great way to continue the summer. Let's go back to last year. That, yes. that must have been uh, interesting, scary, challenging. During a pandemic, you, you're you're doing a parade. Yes. Uh, so, so first going into that, what were you thinking? I was thinking uh, things were scary. We had had food drives. We had good uh, personal good drives for our seniors in the community. People were getting out of work. Places were shut down. Yeah. And there needed to be something for the community to come together. Wow. By this time last year, people recognized that being outside was lower risk. Uh, being spread out along a long mile route yeah. would allow people to distance if they felt they needed yeah. to. And being able to walk through uh, and have something to celebrate, seeing the fire truck, seeing the police chief, seeing wow. the sheriff, w was a wonderful day. Yeah, you, you know, I'm, I'm getting flashbacks of 9-11 yeah. when that happened and everything was shut down. And, and then the, the, the ball games are like, well, do we play, do we not play? And now we have to play. We have to get back to normal. Yeah. So you're on the front line waving that flag. Uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, and now we're looking ahead. When, yes. When's the parade this year? The parade is July 3rd at 4 o'clock. Okay. It's going to go down uh, the same per route uh, that the homecoming parade normally does. Uh, the Independence Parade normally would go down to uh, down Broadway and go around Maine and up okay. Sycamore. But with the construction on Sycamore, we're going to go the opposite way around the, e uh, the east of town and do the homecoming route. And what's what's the theme this year? The theme again is the Declaration of Independence. We kept it as similar as we yeah. could to last year. We are not professional parade planners, yeah. so we wanna make it as easy for us and as easy to communicate to everyone else that what we're doing. And the Declaration of Independence, giving us the, the rights, uh, recognizing the rights of yeah. life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, should be celebrated, especially on the holiday. Oh, that abs is absolutely. There. So who, who participates in the parade? Who do you get in the parade? So we have a lot of people participating this year. One of the special gifts that we've had by a small community uh, putting this on has been the involvement of families. Yeah. Uh, back before, uh, when it was other organizers for the parades, it was more entities and organizations and clubs. We still have all of those and they're all welcome to come and walk in our parade. We're really excited to be having uh, the Lebanon cheerleaders with us again and having dozens of families and organizations uh, from Kiwanis to candidates to everybody come in a walk and be part of this. So, so families can be in a parade too? Yes, they sign up. And it they can gotta, just be going to turn their, their vehicle into a floater. If they want to have a vehicle, yeah. uh, if their kids can't walk a whole mile, that's yeah. fine. Put some things up, put a flag on the back of your minivan. Wow. Uh, or if you want to walk and pull a little red rider with your kids in it, waving yeah. flags and handing out candy, that's great too. Yeah. Do the kids still decorate the bikes with uh, red, white, and blue stuff? The, yeah. We have yeah. the streamers coming down okay. from the handlebars, those little flip things okay. within the spokes. It, it is a really great time, smiles all around. Wow. And anyone that still wants to sign up, our registration is still open, yeah. and we'd love to have them. Who do you have signed up right now so far? Hey, so who, Who's signed up? You got the cheerleaders so far? We have far? the cheerleaders. Uh, we have a U.S. congressional, people pull all the way up from U.S. congressional candidates okay. down to uh, city councilmen wanting to run. We have families. We have Kiwanis. We have... Yeah. Uh, dozens right now that I could go through yeah. and it's it I, is I would think this would be a good opportunity for a, a new upstart businesses to get a float in a parade and let people know is that a possibility absolutely yeah. businesses can be part of it okay. uh, we have some of our local uh, I know gun shops have been part of it we have the US ambulance that has been part of it we've had uh, any of the businesses, I believe Soul Sidekick Studio, 
uh, just uh, registered to want to be in it. And it is open to everyone. We'd love to have our, nice. our bookstores, our restaurants, every, anyone that can get off on the, the Saturday for an hour yeah. to come walk with us yeah. and promote their business and be seen as part of the community because we're all in this together. So how many people did you have last year? So we in had, parade? in the parade, we had around 200 walking in the parade. Oh my goodness, yeah. And probably four or five times that watching, okay. which was great. Yeah. It was one of the larger events, obviously, of 2020. Oh, that's it. Yeah, but compared to normal, is that a little smaller than usual or during a I'd pandemic? say it was probably about 20% smaller. Oh, my. That's uh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so we still kept that going, yeah. and we were very, very excited for how that turned out. So how do you sign up for the parade if you want to mark So it? if you want to sign up, uh, you go to MainStreetLebanon.org and you click on upcoming events and it's the first thing right there that you can yeah. RSVP, it'll ask a few questions. And from there, you'll handle it, you'll be working directly with me and we'll sign you up on where you'll be in the parade. We ask yeah. a few questions to make sure we have lessons learned that you don't wanna put ambulances next to animals because that spooks them. Okay. And so we- I didn't uh, know that. Right, yeah. and we didn't either, yeah, okay. but we found that out and we are gonna make sure that everyone, the parade is enjoyable to watch, enjoyable to walk in yeah. and also celebrates the freedoms that are enshrined in I, our documents. I, I remember back when I was a kid, a million years ago, the big attraction for the parade was uh, they'd have clowns. And this was yeah. before clowns freaked people out because now clowns got a bad rap. Yeah. And, and, and I'm pulling for the clowns. I mean, I love the clowns. Are we going to have any clowns? I would hope so. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I know I mean people with face paint. Right. The, the, the world's full of clowns, they're, Adam. But they're full of clowns. I mean, if the I mean, official wants to with the nose, us, the hair. If you want to sign up, I'll get yeah. you the makeup. Okay. That'd be great. Okay. So. And, and I remember the clowns used to throw the candy out yep. from the fire trucks. Now, now, now you can't. You can't throw candy anymore. We are asking the, right? that we can hand out candy yeah. uh, with people, with so many vehicles, so many animals, so many people walking, and not everyone being a professional baseball player, being yeah. able to throw candy where it needs to be. Yeah. We're asking people hand it out to the, the kids on the sidewalk uh, rather than throwing it, yeah. which is, again, it's the... That's, that's up from last year. It's La up from last, last year, year where we could, weren't able yeah. to hand out anything. Yeah, so. well, that's, that's exciting. Uh, and, and again, what, what is the route for the parade? The route for parade will start up near Barrel House okay. and then come south and then encircle the east side of town b bounded by Mechanic okay. and Broadway and Main Street. Okay. And, and what would, it starts at four. Starts at four. Do, do, do people still get out extremely early just to get that special seat or, or if they put something on, on the side like at 10 in the morning, yep. is it still going to be there at 4? Because some people, when it comes to I can't to speak seat, to that. Yeah. I, uh, I know that for other parades, uh, they were trying to say, please don't do that. Yeah. I'm not in charge of, of that. Those are the yeah. city streets, and you can risk your chair if you want. But I would just get there early and then be, be ready once the parade's over to walk up to Colonial Park. The city is still doing all of their... Fourth of July celebrations yeah. as well with the petting zoos sure. and the concerts and the fireworks. And yeah, we're, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Uh, are, are, are there gonna be fire trucks in the parade? There will. You know what fire trucks have with them, don't, don't you? They, they, get, they got hoses with water. Yes. So do they spray the crowd with the water? Can they get a nice, <laughs> fire guys and gals, can you get a nice mist going? Cause it's gonna be hot out it there. It could be very, very yeah. hot. And that is gonna be up to them. I know, uh, I don't know so if Franklin's cool. having their okay. parade, but they normally, theirs is a big water gun yeah. fight yeah. up there. So. That would be nice. I, I want to encourage the firemen, get that work on that mist. Maybe maybe we can even see a, a rainbow kind of That'd through there. That would, be, uh, that would be beautiful. Uh, the parade's on rain or shine? Rain or shine. We're okay. going to be there no matter what. If if you are a family that's signed up and you know your two-year-old's two not going to want to yeah. be in there, that's that's fine. Just and, and let how, us know. And how long does the parade last? It's about 35, 40 okay. minutes. 35 minutes. That's, that's not too long. And then, again, you go to the park for the fireworks. Uh, is there anything else? Do we miss anything? Uh, it, we would love to have more people sign up. Okay. Uh, we're having registration really up to a week before. And you go to MainStreetLebanon.org, okay. click on upcoming events and sign up. And we'd love to have everyone there to celebrate our independence. Nice. Come out and celebrate with us. Uh, no mask. Okay. Come out there, have fun. Stay tuned. Now that you know uh, when the parade is, we've got something for you to do after the parade. Coming back right after this break.
Break your fast food habit at Kelly's Meats and Deli at 1001 West Main Street in Lebanon. Stop in for a quick lunch featuring made-to-order sandwiches, tasty sides, and mouth-watering daily specials. For dinner, Kelly's offers fresh-cut steaks, chops, and seafood, plus a variety of prepared dishes that only need to be reheated. You'll also find a large selection of high-quality wine and beer that can make any meal a special event. Kelly's Meats and Deli, open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Tuesday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday. Now open for dinner Saturdays, 6 to 9 p.m. And remember, we cater to... Your hometown source, the Lebanon Channel, is now on YouTube. I know how fortunate I am. Just search City of Lebanon, Ohio to connect with everything that's happening right here. And, and that's going to be an exciting part about this walking tour. Subscribe to receive exclusive local content available only on the Lebanon Channel. Wow, Neil Armstrong's coming to my launch. I was so excited about that. That's the City of Lebanon, Ohio, now on YouTube. That's what makes us uh, Lebanon, Ohio, a great yeah, place buddy. to live. Yeah. An auto accident is a terrible thing to encounter. Oftentimes, people look to getting their car taken care of, but they forget to take care of their body. At Lebanon Chiropractic and Fitness, that's what we do. We take care of your body with chiropractic adjustments, therapeutic massage, and therapeutic exercise. So if you've been involved in a vehicular collision, call our office at 933-9799 so we can take care of the body that counts. Call now to schedule your free initial consultation, 933-9799. All across the country, people are coming together to speed up what we can learn about health. The All of Us Research Program is calling on one million people to join us as we try to change the future of health. For your family, for future generations, for all of us. Visit joinallofus.org and find out how you can become one in a million. Lebanon's Minister of Outdoor Fun, Casey Burdick, is back, and she's going to tell us about the Independence Day celebration and fireworks, plus some other fun things to do in our parks this summer. Uh, welcome back. Did you know that was your new title? Oh, no, I like the that minister, one. I'll take it. Yeah. Minister of Fun. I like that. <laughs> uh, so the Independence Day celebration is on July 3rd. Uh, what day of the week is that? July it's on 3rd. a Saturday this okay. year. Well, that's nice. Uh, wh when does it start? So the festival portion of the Independence Day celebration starts at 6. Okay. And it goes until 10 o'clock and the fireworks are scheduled to go off at 10. So what do they do before the fireworks? So we have a band that starts okay. at 7, Timestamp. It's a local band. Um, they're a great, fun cover band. Everybody has a good time. Yeah. We have some balloon artists making balloon animals for kids. Nice. Um, a few little small carnival games, a petting zoo. Yeah. Get a snow cone. Have oh. a good time. So how was the turnout uh, last year with the pandemic uh, as far as the kids coming out? Were they were they holding back quite a bit last year? Last year we didn't have the actual festival. Okay. We allowed to par um, people to park at the fairgrounds at a couple of locations so they could still enjoy the fireworks. And we had a great turnout for that. Yeah. But we just encouraged everyone to kind of enjoy the fireworks at arm's length, I guess, and last and what, year. What kind of petting zoo are you going to have? What kind of animals? Oh, they have all kinds of different animals. I think there's 20 different animals wow. from, you know, your normal goats and things. Yeah. And last a uh, couple years ago, they had some more exotic things from like New Zealand and okay. things. So okay. I don't remember what they're called, but yeah, so a nice variety of I animals. I understand there's going to be alpacas in the in the parade. Are they coming to the other place? I think uh, that's separate. Okay. I don't know if they'll bring an alpaca or not. So, so do you have some some farm in town that assists you with that, or where do you, where do you get these? <laughs> Are these your animals? Oh no, they're not my animals. All right. No, um, there's a there's a group that comes in, and we call them, and they're they're from Southern Ohio that come up. Okay. That's nice to have that taken care of. Now, how'd you find this band? And tell me just a little bit more about them. So we have Timestamp. Okay. Um, they go on at 7, and they play right up to the fireworks start. And they're a local band. They played a couple of years ago. A lot of people like them. They play a lot of classic rock. Nice. Um, they're just fun. They have yeah. a good time up there and encourage everyone to have fun, too. Parking pretty easy up there? Yes. Yeah, so we okay. have folks park at the fairgrounds. And then we have the Lebanon Police Department to help people cross the uh, okay. Broadway up there. Yeah, and they seem to do a pretty good job. People getting in and out, not, not really bogged down. I remember as a kid going to the fireworks, the down part was you'd be stuck in traffic for an hour. <laughs> I don't see that happening out here. They do a good we, job. We try to keep things moving as well as possible. And there is also um, handicap parking available in Colonial Park okay. West, so okay. the folks don't have to walk so That's far. That's nice. And uh, who designs and runs the fireworks show? So we hire Rozzy's Famous Fireworks. They do a phenomenal job yeah. every year. And um, 
you know, they've been with us for a long time. They're the ones who do the big fireworks shows down on the river. So we're really lucky to have yeah. them up here. So once it gets dark, yeah, that's when they go up? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So you can set okay. your watch to it. Okay. 10 o'clock, they'll go off, and they usually run about 30 to 40 minutes. Okay. And, and I imagine the grand finale is probably spectacular. Of course. Yeah. Uh, is there an admission? How do you how do you pay for all this? This is uh, through the the uh, parks general fund. Okay. So it's for it's for the enjoyment of the community. It's yeah. a family friendly event, and we just want everyone to come out and enjoy it. And even parking, no no charge no for charge parking. No charge for any oh, of that. Oh my goodness! Uh, and the fairgrounds are going to be available for parking. Let Let's shift gears just a little bit. You had a second Saturday program at the uh, Miller Ecological Park over the weekend with naturalist Bob Hen. Uh, and a wild flower, uh, flower hike. Uh, how, how did that work out? That went really well. We didn't have a huge turnout, but everyone who was there um, learned a little something. Yeah. And it was a little hot day, but yeah. it was okay. We we made the best of it and uh, had a nice walk out there you, at the park. You do all kinds of stuff like that. What, what do you have on tap for July? So July, we're going to take some time to clean up the rain garden. Okay. So anybody who wants to volunteer, you don't have to have any special skills. I'll bring the gloves and some water, and if you can come out and help us get the rain garden cleared of all the bad plants or yeah. the not so desirable plants, that would be awesome. Wow, so, so you're looking for people to come out and help with yeah. that stuff. That'd uh, be very helpful. Uh, spe speaking of water, uh, the, the, uh, the lake that they have out there, the fishing pond, is, is that all complete now? So at Colonial Park West, yeah. or it's kind of right at where the T-ball fields used to be, yeah. if people are familiar with that, right by the swinging bridge. Um, yes, we do have our pond complete. Wow. Uh, it was done earlier this year and it was stocked with fish as well. Okay, so it's a catch and release? Correct, yeah. yeah. Is, is that becoming pretty popular? We have a lot of people down there. I don't know what they're catching because the fish yeah. were pretty small that okay. we stocked it with. So Make, make sure you put them back because <laughs> yeah. they, they got to they gotta grow. Uh, the city's also running a Lebanon's Park Wellness Challenge this, this summer. Uh, what's that all about? So this is the Lebanon Park Wellness Challenge. So it's just a little pamphlet. You can pick this up at the city building, at yeah. Miller Park, the library, uh, and Greenhouse Cafe all have a stock of these. Okay. So you can go through it and there's a list of um, 13 activities you can do for all skill levels. Yeah. So simple as going to the park and having a picnic to going for a three mile walk. Okay. So and you you can try to get out to some of the different parks and see what you have out okay. at what we have to offer. So have you incorporated some kind of challenge or contest with this? And if so, are there are there prizes? Can people win things? Absolutely. So if you just do one activity yeah. and you come into the city building with your form here, I'll give you a really nice sticker. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and then after that, if you do up to five activities, we will, I believe it's five, let me double check here, I have the form right here. So five to ten activities, you have your choice of a water bottle yeah. or a net gator for the adults or for kids, we have some fun yeah. prizes too. So fidget spinners, bike bells, nice. and bubbles for the real little kids. Yeah, I, I, you know, I love what you do, getting kids <laughs> off the couch, out of the house, put the gadgets down, go out to the park and, and experience some of mm -hmm. this stuff. And, you know, so in a way you're helping moms and dads out there combat against obesity too, because that's still, that, that's still epi an epidemic, you know, mm -hmm. obesity. So thanks for encouraging people to get out there. Uh, I also understand that the uh, Bicentennial Park is hosting a night of Shakespeare, uh, Shakespeare in the park. Uh, when, when is that and how is that gonna be presented? So that's on July 17th at 7 p.m. at Bicentennial Park. That's the park that's downtown, right at the corner of Mulberry and Cherry Street. Okay. And there's a gazebo there. Some people call it gazebo park, but it's actually called Bicentennial Park. Um, and the um, Cincinnati Shakespeare Company will be presenting Romeo and Juliet. Nice. And, and how long is that going to be, that performance? I th they usually try to wrap it up about an hour and a half. Okay. And you got so much going on. How, how can our residents keep up with everything that you're doing? Is there a, a site they can go to to get all these activities? Sure. The City of Lebanon's website um, is a really great op option. We have a calendar on there of all the activities coming up, as well as our uh, Facebook page and okay. Instagram page. Uh, we do a pretty good job of keeping that all up oh, to date. Fantastic. I, I don't know how you do everything you do. Uh, and and our, our city continues to look more and more beautiful. I, I love the, the bike trails and how everything is, is coming together. Uh, 
do you see a rest in the end? Are you guys going to just continue? Are you going to build vertically <laughs> and do like slides? Or what's, what's next? We, we just have a lot of projects coming up and we'll just yeah. keep pushing and trying to capture, you know, what the people want and yeah. make sure there's something for folks to do. Well, I love the outdoors, athletic. It's, it's like Lebanon's becoming like Colorado. Uh, except we got to we got to damper down this humidity a little bit. You a got any bit. plans for that? <laughs> I hope ideas? so. It's been hot. <laughs> hey, is there anything else that we need to know before we move on? I think uh, also mark your calendars for August fourteenth. We have okay. our butterfly release oh, nice. at Miller Park yeah. that weekend. And is that that's always a popular event? That's very popular, yeah. and Lebanon Garden Club does a great job okay. with that. That's a good shout for them. Hey, uh, we'll be back. Stay tuned, uh, and we'll be meeting with the Lebanon Theater Company right after this break. Since 1954, Hardy's Interiors has been providing quality furnishings for homes in and around Lebanon, Ohio. Today, you'll still find quality antique and vintage furniture along with new Made in America furniture of all styles. At Hardy's, you can create a mix of furniture and accessories that truly reflects your personality, all made to last a lifetime. Designers are welcome and so are you. Hardy's Interiors at 208 and a half Wright Avenue or online at hardysinteriors.com. When I first saw Turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with Turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. So there you are. Shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Welcome back to The City Show. Uh, are you looking for a creative outlet for your children this summer? Uh, one option that may hit the spot is the Lebanon Theater Camp, which is coming up in July. There's still time to sign up, so uh, Carol Rickey and Jay Mills are here to tell us how to sign your kids up for that. Plus, they have exciting news regarding the return of live theater in Lebanon. Uh, welcome back, yeah, first time. On a show, at least with me, I think. With you, yes. Yeah, of course. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and, and Jay, you and I have have some good history. Uh, well, that's that's great news. The theater's back. You guys must be so excited. Uh, yeah. Tell us about your history first with the theater. How did you get involved, Carol? And um, what do you do with them now? <laughs> well, I um, I was a theater major at first. Then I switched majors to speech and language pathology. So yeah. that's what I've made my living with. But um, in um, just uh, extra time I've done theater yeah. so I've done costuming with the theater company I'm on the board um, I've been on the board for a long time now I've also um, worked with camp just about every year that it's been in in uh, service and Act. and I do <laughs> I do perform sometimes <laughs> now, now were you guys able to perform or hold the theater camp last year we did. We yeah. had it all on Zoom. Oh my goodness. So that was different. Yeah. So I got to uh, demonstrate blood and uh, snot and <laughs> <laughs> scabs yeah. online. Because yeah. <laughs> that's what I get to do with it. I, I bet you're glad to experience that right up front now instead of doing that via Skype. Yeah. Yes. Uh, explain how the camp works for the kids. Uh, they come in in the morning and um, 
Amy, uh, one of the directors, and Kate both uh, teach the kids a camp song to sing uh, for the final performance. They pr they practice that each day at several times yeah. so that that's polished uh, for the final performance. And then we do um, just a variety of theater exercises. Okay. They learn uh, stage presence, they learn stage direction, they learn some of the theater tech, like lighting and sound. Yeah. Um, they learn a little bit about costumes, they learn about um, makeup wow. and special effects. Yeah. And so we try to give them um, just a variety of different uh, things to do on stage yeah. and off stage and try to give them I, a good experience. I had experience. the privilege two years ago uh, to meet a lot of the kids and uh, I think we interviewed them right here, and I was so impressed. They were just so engaged, and they made eye contact. Kids don't do that anymore. You know, they, they just have their devices. Right. So uh, th this could be a great thing to just prepare children for, for life and down the road for interviews. And yeah. uh, I, I, I bet if they tracked it as far as college and other things, I bet the kids who go through that program really have a line of success, and that's from what you guys do. That's so cool. Yeah, uh, we've, we've how, had a good time with them. We, How many we have a lot of repeat kids that yeah. come back okay. and then they end up being adults and then they then perform on stage yeah. with, the, uh, with the other adults. Well, and Are our, you one of those kids? No, <laughs> no, no. They didn't have camp back right. then. And well, back when I was a kid, they didn't have camp. <laughs> I know. You're going to roll into one of them stories. How, and how, the director that we have coming up for this first show, um, opening our theater again yeah. is one of our former camp kids. Wow, there you Kurt go. Kurt is yeah. one of our former camp kids. So wow. he started out with us That's got to be exciting, seeing him come full circle. It yeah. is. How, how many children can you accommodate in a camp? We have 17 signed up right now, mm -hmm. and we have room for a few more. So yeah. people need to get in their registrations quickly. It's okay. online. It's on our website. It's easy to do. They can pay online, or they can send a check. Okay. Uh, through the mail. And how long is the camp? How many weeks? It's just uh, one week, five one week. days. Okay. okay. Monday through Friday, nine to eleven thirty. Okay. Uh, do they take care of lunch, or they get get them out there? <laughs> that was wise. You did it up to lunch and then go home. <laughs> so you can save some expense there. I do the snacks too, okay. so I try to make them good. I yeah. try to make them things that they like, uh, but are easy to manage and don't take up a lot of time because we try to fill up their time with uh, theater. Yeah. And that, now you mentioned there's a performance at the end. What, what's the theme of the performance that the kids are going to be doing this year? Uh, I can't tell you that. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> uh, it'll have uh, to do with the two different groups or typically we divide them into two groups. Paula Whitaker teaches uh, one group, one uh, set of performances. Uh, Amy Eddington King does the other. And then Kate um, teaches them Eddington yeah. teaches them the song and helps uh, with the technical stuff. And, and what's the age range for the kids in the camp? Ages 7 to 12. Okay. So finished with first grade typically and up through about 12. We've tried it for older kids sometimes, but um, it makes it a little easier uh, for them to, uh, or they seem to prefer to try out for things without so much camp. So, okay. But we do have them come back as camp counselors sometimes that's, too. That's neat. And so it's we a, have several it, camp counselors too. And it's a whole week. You mentioned they can pay online. What is the cost for the camp? It's 110. Okay. Well, that's, and so, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. not bad. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping the kids active, doing something good. Uh, now you also have an event coming up this Saturday, June 19th in Bicentennial Park called Sunset Duets. That's a great name, by the way. Uh, can you tell us about that? There's a little yep. poster. I have a poster here. Kim Toft, who is one of the performers, she's right here, came up with this idea and presented it to the board. It was going to be something that we could do in Bicent Bicentennial Park and do it in the evening. So she and Adam Jones have concocted a um, performance Sarah Davis is their accompanist, and um, it's going to be a great show. Yeah. It'll be Saturday at 7 o'clock in Gazebo Park, or no, yeah, Bicentennial Park, and bring a chair. Yeah. It's free. We are accepting donations. Nice. You can go online. The uh, We had done some online plays 
um, and Kim was the director of a couple of those, and then that really worked yeah. with doing donations online. Well, what type of music are they going to be performing? A lot of Broadway. Okay. Uh, okay. New and old. They've got some songs that I don't even know okay. from some of the newer shows and stuff. And Kim another, and Adam are both really good performers. Yeah. Another free entertainment thing in Lebanon. All you got to do is maybe is make a donation. show up. Yeah. Show up and yeah. make a donation. And we it, have it, one donation already. A lady made a donation online. Yeah, that's nice. And so that's great. Now, is this new, the duets? Yes. Okay. It's just starting this year, and we're going to hopefully have another one in August okay. with two more younger kids. Nice. Now, now, I understand you just hosted some auditions at the theater company. Uh, does that mean we got live theater coming back? <laughs> yes. In September, the first two weeks of September, we will be doing... Moonlight and Magnolias. Let me tell you about that. I brought the synopsis because I can't remember a whole lot. You're doing good, Jay. The, um, this show is um, a 1939 Hollywood abuzz. Uh, director, producer David Selznick has shut down theater production of his new epic, Gone with the Wind. Okay. And they um, are, are trying to figure out, they didn't like the script, so they're redoing that. And um, they lock the doors, close the shades, and on a diet of bananas and peanuts, the three men labor over five days to fashion a screenplay that will become the blueprint for one of the most successful films of all time. Okay. Wow, well, that sounds exciting. That and we just exciting. closed auditions on Sunday, and this will run um, the first two weekends of September. Okay. Friday and Saturday at 8. No, I'm sorry, we changed the time this year. 7.30 is our new time for performances, and then Sunday at 2. Okay. Now, you guys used to do some things with the uh, a Golden Lamb as far as a, a meal, and they'd eat there and then go to the theater? Are I'm in negotiations that? with them right okay. now. Okay for um, providing us that opportunity. Nice. The patrons liked it yeah. and it worked out good. You sound like a politician. Well, that was extremely well said, Jay. Thank you. Yeah. It was the coffee that I had at Coffee <laughs> Caravan. <laughs> hey, a good plug for Coffee Caravan out there. Yeah, a great place. Yeah. Uh, hey, how do, you get, how do you get tickets for this performance? Right now, we're doing show by show. We have shows lined up for December, March, and next May as okay. well. But we're doing them show by show instead of doing a season. Yeah. And you will buy individual show tickets for each show. Okay. So have we come out of that pandemic uh, and have we learned how things can run even better? Are, are we better than we were before? Because uh, we, we had to make so many changes and uh, have there been alterations that are going to continue in the theater? We don't know. Yeah. We don't know right now because this is our first time back. But right now we're back, regular seating? R yes, regular okay. seating. We're filled up to 110 oh, seats. Oh, wow. fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Uh, can you give me a recap again of the theater camp? How do you sign up for the, for the theater camp? Go online to ltcplays.com okay. and uh, look for there's a theater camp uh, message on the on the opening, the home page. Yeah. And so follow that link and it will tell, um, it gives a little bit of the history of theater camp and then it gives you another link for the registration. Nice, nice. So it's very easy and uh, they can always call the theater though if there's a problem because Jay mans the phones, uh, <laughs> takes if, care of all the messages. If you call, please leave a message. Yeah. <laughs> Please leave a message. And the number so you can call them back. That's right. Yeah. Guys, is there anything else? Do we miss anything? I'm so excited for you. I mean, looking at what you went through, the, the agony, the pain, the suffering, and now it's kind of like you're having a baby. It's time to celebrate. <laughs> yeah. Come on down to the theater and celebrate with our friends at the Lebanon Theater. Uh, company. Th thanks, Carol. So nice seeing you again, Jay. Great seeing you as always. Uh, Thank you. Hey, we're not done yet. Uh, we'll discuss Cedar Oaks Wellness Center right after this break. Disaster tips from the objects left behind. My home wasn't insured. 
But you can check your insurance policy now to make sure you're covered. Oh. My savings are lost. But you can put money aside and plan for unexpected disaster costs. We're lost forever. But you can scan important documents now so they survive. Oh. For more tips on how to prepare, visit ready.gov. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Observe a domesticated human family in their natural habitat, known to their species as the backyard. Hey, you think I should light it now? I think it's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? Oh dear, someone is about to burn a pile of debris that's too tall, which can start a wildfire. Wait, could it be? Blimey, oh, it is. It's Smokey. It's Smokey Bear. What a legend. What's the hey, it's here? Smokey. Sorry, it was too high. Right. Watch as he astutely ensures that there's no wind and how he removes some of the debris to create a smaller, safer burning pile. No, you, you, see, no, you can't make it bigger, baby. The bigger, the better. Take note right. of our fearless furry friend here, yeah. humans. I appreciate it. Chris Bump. <laughs> <laughs> Watching you. Smokey's done it again. Hi, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, if you travel out 350 towards Fort Ancient, you may have noticed some changes in old King's Domain property and a new name on a sign out front, Cedar Oaks Wellness Center. Ted Parlman? Parlberg. Parlberg. The CEO of Cedar Oaks is here with us today to share what this new facility is bringing to Warren County. Ted, welcome to the City Show. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself first and how you ended up here in Warren County. Sure. So my background has been uh, professionally in healthcare. Um, yeah. and actually started 30 some years ago, um, starting up behavioral health programs in Illinois. And um, kind of went full circle over the last 30 years. And um, I uh, got together with a buddy of mine two and a half years ago and we said, what do you, you wanna do something different with our yeah. careers? And both of us have been touched directly by the, uh, the impact of, of addiction. Um, my son is in recovery, and he would not mind me saying that. He's um, eight years sober now. and um, So we started thinking about putting a program together like this, and we researched clinical programs, we researched uh, properties, and long story short, we, we happened upon the, the King's Domain, the former King's Domain property, and the minute we drove onto it, we looked at each other and we said, this is it. This is wow. it. Yeah. So... Um, You've been there. I it's have. It, the, yeah. the the facility and the and the environment just it just oozes serenity and peacefulness, yeah. and we felt that that was the absolute perfect yeah. setting for uh, for recovery. And, uh, and your recovery your treatment. staff is is top notch too. I mean, they're you awesome. Have so many wonderful professionals. Tell us a little bit about uh, Cedar Oaks Wellness Center. What what's the vision? Sure. Who, who are you targeting to assist and help? Sure. So um, our, our vision is, is quite simple. Um, we know that there's an epidemic out there, and we have, as you said, we've got the team to, uh, to address that. Um, and uh, I was just uh, talking earlier with my leadership team. Um, our grounds are beautiful. Our program is great. But it's our people that really make the difference yeah. for the folks that come to us for, for recovery. Um, we have... Uh, you know, lots of adjunctive therapies that we wrap around people, but the magic is in getting them away from their substance, yeah. getting them good nutrition, good exercise, and wrapping a caring team around them um, to get them started in their, in their journey to recovery. So, so you and your buddy, this is your brainchild? This uh, is our brainchild. Yeah, yeah. It, it's exciting. And who, who do you see using a facility? Uh, people have what type of dependencies? Sure. Uh, what are you What are you targeting? Well, right now we're throwing a pretty big blanket. Um, yeah. We chose this area not just because of the facility and the, and the, the property, 
but the uh, proximity to Cincinnati and Dayton and, and Louisville, we knew there were big metropolitan areas that held um, market opportunity for us. And we're kind of taking everybody right now to okay. see how that market develops. But opioids, um, you know, we're seeing a pretty impressive, uh, not in a good way, but uh, yeah. increase in fentanyl yeah. use. Yeah. Um, alcohol is going to continue to be a, a focus for us, but all substance uses, basically. So are, are the clients here because of a court order? Are they coming on their own? How, how does that work? Sure. So we, we're not taking court-ordered patients. Okay. Um, these are all voluntary yeah. folks. Um, now, we do have people who come to us who maybe had a couple of OVI yeah. uh, convictions, and they have a choice to make about where their life is going to go, and so they have chosen to, to seek treatment with us, yeah. um, but uh, these are voluntary people who really want to get their lives back together. So you mentioned a little bit about what the treatment program consists of. Can you get a little bit more in depth? So somebody comes in, uh, who do they meet with, and then what other things do they have? Sure. So the process actually starts before our patients get to us, our clients get to us. We have a team of, of uh, development people out in the, in the market who yeah. start the, the conversation, if you will. Um, once that uh, goes to uh, you know the level where we feel they're appropriate for us. Um, our director of nursing will do a triage of their medical um, situation. Our medical director will get involved, and then we'll bring them on and do an intake at yeah. the site with a therapist, a nurse, uh, a physician. We have a nutritional uh, nutritionist, uh, so they get a very comprehensive evaluation prior to even starting treatment with us. Yeah, I, I met I met your staff. I was uh, I was impressed. I was ex I was especially impressed with the nutritionist fitness person. I mean, she uh, she has skills and, and your place uh, it, it's it's like a resort. I mean, it is it is, it is wonderful. Uh, I mean, it, so are you are you hoping that people will recognize we need somewhere nice. We don't want somewhere cold. We want somewhere they're going to feel warm. Right. Uh, cuz that you got it. That's that that's the atmosphere right. that you have and I think uh that that's that's amazing. Uh yeah, So how how long has the facility been open now? 7 weeks. Okay. Um, just But we really put a lot of thought into the facility and into the configuration yeah. and to as you saw when you were out there uh, the clients stay in small cottages. Okay. So it's not a large dormitory. It's not you know, for lack of a better description, an anthill. Yeah. Um, but it's a very intimate and personal setting, and we feel that that facilitates recovery in a, in a real, real special way. Is this a self-pay type program? Do, does insurance pay for this it too? It does. Or? It does. So okay. um, insurance pays for this. We we have some patients that will pay out of pocket. Yeah. Um, it's, their, again, their choice. But, um, yeah, it's... it's um, now, now, you can't, you, you can't put a, a date uh, on, on how long it takes to recover, sure, or, or can you? I mean, how long are people there? Is it a certain time, or it, does it just go until they're ready? So the short answer to that is recovery is a lifetime journey. Yeah. We feel uh, privileged to get that journey started for people. And um, so our average stay um, will look like, you know, a month. Uh, we know that we'll have people who will be there longer. Yeah. And again, we do uh, assessments uh, ongoing through their stay, so we're making sure that we're meeting the client's needs. In fact, that's kind of our tagline. We meet people where they are. Nice. And so we yeah. need to be able to be very client-focused and, and very uh, uh, intentional about the treatment that we, that we have them go through when they're with us. So how many people do you anticipate being able to serve and help uh, in, in a year? Sure. So we, we're opening with 26 beds. We have six uh, detox beds and yeah. 20 residential beds and uh, a business plan that grows uh, another 40 another 40 beds, another four small cottages yeah. by the end of this year. So we uh, will be able to accommodate 66 uh, patients by the end of this year. Yeah. Now, um, ad addiction, obviously, it's, it's a problem that's not going away and it's it's growing quite a bit, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. And we see lots of different trends over the years about, you know, what substances are are being used more frequently and more, uh, you know, prominent than others. We're seeing, a, as I said, an increase in fentanyl use um, yeah. recently. And, uh, you know, these are not just addiction, um, addictive uh, substances, but they're, they're lethal. They're potentially lethal. Yeah. 
So people are making a choice between life and death when they come to see us. Yeah, this this isn't a game. Yeah, this, this is not a game. This is the real deal. Yeah. Uh, he, when you first came into town, th did you get a little pushback from some of the neighbors as far as maybe not wanting to have some kind of program in their backyard? And, and how are things going now uh, sure. with that? We did. Um, I will have to say we spent uh, the better part of a half a year just uh, working out in the community, telling folks about what we were planning to do, and, and uh, uh, we came across some, some resistance, but I would say 85 to 90 percent of the people that I met with, once they learned about yeah. what we were going to do, were really all yeah. for it nice. and advocates. But yeah. as you mentioned, that, that's, that's not uncommon for a center like this to have some people who question. Um, yeah. We just feel that those are folks who chose not to be educated, basically. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, and you're educating them, that's good. Uh, uh, who, who should be reaching out to Cedar Oaks? Who are you hoping is going to call you and, and ring your phone line? And, sure. Uh, who, do you, who do you want to see calling you? So we've got a lot of great providers. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a real advocate of partnering with the people in the community. Um, but there are providers that provide lower levels of care, like um, intensive outpatient, which meets typically three times a week. Okay. Uh, partial hospital, which can be five days a week. For some people, that's a very appropriate level of care. For some people, they need something at a higher level, where they actually need to be in a 24-hour facility and environment to, to escape um, um, their disease, not to escape their disease, but the environment that they're in. Um, but, um, you know, we, we feel like we've got great community partners. Um, so when folks are done with us, we can discharge them to, to providers and in, in the community. So, and, and as far as if somebody wants to find out and they're curious, uh, can they can they go down there get a tour and see what they you can? Want? They can. Um, the best way to do that would be to go to our website, which okay. is cedaroakswellness.com. Um, we do have a, a, a telephone number on there that can be called, and we can we can organize and, and schedule tours. Yeah. Um, we do that for providers. Yeah. Uh, we want folks to know who we are and what we're about. But we've also done that for prospective patients. They want to know too, yeah, and that's sure. perfectly that's perfectly fine. And it's such a warm setting. I, it I is. Mean, uh, my, my tour up there, I, I, I would have I would have felt really comfortable going spending a weekend up there with my wife and just uh, uh, staying at your place. It, it really yeah. has almost a resort uh, feel it does. Uh, to it. I'm not sure if that's what you're going for, but very comfortable, very serene. I mean, just just beautiful. Yeah. And think... to be able to go through what they're going through, and have that environment uh, and you nailed it yeah yeah it was kind of interesting last night I was I was on the on the property and the uh, the clients were having an AA meeting around the campfire yeah um, and that's kind of one of our kind of meeting places yeah. uh, we, we like to do a lot of things outdoors because we have the, the space and we have the campus to do that but um, it was just fun to watch them engage in a in a 12-step meeting yeah. um, around a campfire that's neat. And, and, uh, yeah. so very if, special. If people want to get more information about Cedar Oaks treatment program, uh, how do they get a hold of that? Is there a website? Yes. I, again, I'll go back to our website is cedaroakswellness.com. Um, there is a uh, uh, phone number on there that is uh, answered uh, 24 hours a day. Great. If people need help or if they want to just make inquiries. Yeah. So uh, we want to be as accessible as possible and remove as many barriers to treatment as we can. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that's around education. So we welcome people calling us and asking about what we're doing. Yeah. And, uh, that's part of, our, part of our mission is to educate and decrease the stigma that's out in the community. Nice, well, what, what a mission you got. Uh, great people, great facility. Is there anything that I missed before we go? No, I think, I think we've, we've captured yeah. it. You know, we, uh, we looked at, at programs and we wanted to be a world-class clinical program yeah. and do that in an environment of this peaceful, serenity, uh, serene um, uh, campus because we live in such a noisy, fast-paced world. Yeah. We just really felt that this was an optimum place to slow folks down and focus on recovery. Yeah, well, you're meeting a need and you're meeting in a great way. Uh, Ted, thanks for being here. Tom, hey, I appreciate that, it. That's our show for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget, third Friday coming up uh, next week, the Sunset Duets after that. And then the Independence Day Parade and Celebration. Enjoy your summer. We'll see you next month.